Hello everybody, I'm Tyler Edlin. Welcome back to another episode of the Brush Sauce Theater. This week I'm talking about the five most common design mistakes that I see in my classes. I teach privately, I teach at the schools, I teach online, and many of them are design-based courses for the entertainment industry. I'd like to just talk about what I see frequently. These are all student examples, I'm not trying to pick on them, but they share a very common thread from what I, you know, from problems that I see a lot. So here we go. So for my first largest design mistake, that would be the lack of context. Here's this student submission I got. And again, without any kind of other written notes or, or beforehand conversations, and I got this the way it, it, that it's seen here, I have no idea what it goes to, what exactly how it kind of works into things. There's that lack of context to it. I'm disconnected from it as the consumer, as the viewer, and as anybody that's trying to understand this. And good design ultimately comes down to clarity. And with this, it's it's hard to place this the sense of scale, uh, all the materials. It, and it's, it's essentially a character's house, but it tells me nothing about the type of person that lives there, who they are, where they're going, where they've been, and what kind of their personal tastes are. I need to know more context. My uh, best solution for this type of mistake is to mind map your idea out, make a word list, search things out, find common roots in terms of words, meanings, or objects, anything really that can be associated with this and the message you're trying to convey to your, um, your audience or your viewer, and that will help you know get more specific details in there, and that's kind of what it needs. Just give it a very clear sense of purpose and who it belongs to, and it would, and you know, in this case, would be a lot better for it. Now, same example from the student the week later. They came back. I see a little village scene made up of these houses. So see, now it's a lot more. There's a lot more clarity here. It's still not perfect clarity, but it's a lot better. I could start to see. Okay, I can see the scale of the people there. The material's still a little iffy, but you know, there's there's more going on and there's more for us to digest what type of society the village is yeah that's neither here or there but we can we can take a lot more in and it can get the conversation between uh, yourself your friends maybe a prospective client further and that's the idea now it wasn't until I actually received their reference for these objects which I'm showing now ah right <laughs> there it all is so this is rock this is like it's, it's like a sandstone. These are like built-in dwellings. Now I get it. And so I'd like to mention at this point, when you were showing something that you know is very much based in reality, uh, having either a diagram, which you're, which you're drawing, or your design can go a long way. If not, you'd have to just get your drawing skill or your design, design skills, in a sense, your, the technical side of things, so, so much further up there so that you could draw out all these things. And it's, you know, there won't be a question in the viewer's eye. Again, here's the next one, right? It's a, it's a temple. We get that much, and this was, of course, done week three. But again, there's a huge lack of context here. Uh, again, it's hard to exactly tell the scale, though we can see from the inconsistently spaced steps. But I don't know if this is in a rock. I don't know if this is on top of a mountain. I don't know if this is going into a tree trunk. There's just too many unknown parameters not specified here. So again, it, one way to resolve this problem in design is to just specify more and more things. And what, another way to resolve that is to make a project outline or an, an image outline for a specific piece. Okay, this is this, this is gonna be that. And you can kind of systematically go through things. All right, now that brings us on to my second most commonly seen uh, design flaw, and that is something that's unrefined. So looking at this example here, it, there's a lot of great ideas going on here. This student is super creative. They're not afraid to go out there and try things. But as I circle all these different elements, those are all four, you know, five different <laughs> com components that are making up this scene. You got windmills, you got stacked towers, you got an upside down fishbowl tank. That this city's there's so many different ideas. There becomes a lack of focus of them, and you again you want to ask like why? You know why does this exist? Why does it here? You know why is it here? Who does it serve? And my my most uh, my largest tip that I would say to fix this sort of problem is to keep doing revisions on your own design. Keep wor weeding out what's not working and and add, and keeping what's working and move it to the next pass. For me, ultimately, what it comes down to on most things, whether it's a prop, a place, or even a person, ask what the function is, what does the character do, what is their role, 
where again where have they gone where have they where are they going that can often resolve this you know per pass now this next one here again is a great drawing overall you know the, the draftsmanship's really nice uh, the idea is refined but uh, the layout and the overall structure is what you know needs more refining it needs more passes the, the perspective here is a little it's a little questionable uh, the scale and placement of other elements again are a little questionable so for me I'd I'd move the, the composition over and I'd start just basically terraforming the different environments here so again this is something I would chop up like I'm doing here but then I'd redraw it on the next pass and therefore be a, a more refined version of what we see here we're not changing any ideas just kind of shifting things around a bit so they make a more pictorial sense maybe they increase the view and, and again it come, kind of comes down to what you want to get out of this image is it about the grand view is it about the majesticness of something or is it about how there's a dominating fortress in the background you might choose a different angle maybe we're just discovered something fresh and it's it's relaxing and inviting again it used different shapes different angles a different pictorial path through the canvas to get there and so that's what I'm trying to fix with this is the major layout and structure of the overall image which brings us to this next example which are a series of sketches I received again outlining some uh, some structures now these are fine sketches I think they're a fantastic first pass but I again that's where the conversation would have to stay they need to be refined they need to be worked up and resolved a lot more so if it's anything to take away from this second design problem that I'm talking about is just more resolution a little bit more answers in terms of like it, you have the right ideas but let's just kind of work out the kinks with it all right that leads me to my third major issue with design that I see and it's something we all think about it's something we've all done and that's generic ideas something that's just so kind of plain and vanilla we need a little extra seasoning we need a few more flavors on top that's going to make the design pop a little bit more it'll be a little more memorable in the viewers uh, you know imagination and memory so uh, in this case it's just kind of it's a very standard in it, it and that's what it is it's like an inn it's a little bit of a tavern scene it's very well drawn and you know perfectly articulated in that regard but we need some more seasoning and another way of putting that is essentially a lack of personality, a lack of character. So I'm just going to jump in on this quick example here and just start trying to put a little bit more uh, flavor into the design. My first move would be to kind of segment the floor, add different levels. I always think it's cool when you, I'm looking up different research and I'm, I'm seeing cabins and lodges. And there's lot, lots of little micro elevation changes. Not the most practical of thing. But they're fun, and they can start to. We could start to build from there. So, like, oh yeah, we could have railings. We could have a little stairway. Oh, in that regard, since we're changing levels, we could put a stage, have a place for performers. Maybe it's a band of travelers. Maybe it's a carnival in town. Maybe it's just a local, you know, drunk that gets up on stage. But see, it adds little things. It 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 invests more story into your idea. The next thing I I would do is start segmenting the floor. The floor in this overall is needs to be designed a lot more. Is there bolts? Is there rivets here? Is there different planks? Has it been built? Has it been repaired? Is there holes in the ground? How old is it? How new is it? These sort of questions are how I, my mind typically works when I'm tackling such similar tasks. Again, I'm sketching out a rough layout for the patrons over here. We have the longer, longer table up near closer to the fireplace or the more important people sit maybe it's like the VIP area maybe we put hunting trophies on the mantle of that uh, fireplace and of course different weapons and you know, it just needs anything any kind of decoration to let us know again who operates this what kind of uh, customer base do they have and I think you know putting bushes outside maybe it's putting uh, different uh, mugs or uh, souvenirs up along the mantle it could be anything but it's like these types of details that really can set you apart And here's the outside version of it, which I think is very nice in and itself. It, it's fine. It's, it's it's a fairly common and typical design. We see that you know the the, the A-frame of the house. It's a half timber, and we have a little nice you know gazebo end. I'm again, I'm not the, the the exact sure of the technical name of that, but it, it's overall it's a great design. So let me just move the um the chat going over here over, and then 
I'm going to give a few light suggestions. It's nothing major. It's not going to redesign anything, you know, fancy. But I'm just like, how do we take the core shapes and, again, maybe rearrange them in a little bit more of an interesting or, you know, atypical way, a little more of an uncommon layout? So I like, okay, we, I love the idea of this house. But what if we take that, scale it down, have two of them extruding from one massive slope of a roof, right? Something, something that, you know, a little more memorable. Like this building has one massive roof side that's, off center it's it's a little short on one side long on the other and then we have these two elements that kind of extrude out from that it's good to have these repeating elements i always feel so yeah this would be the roof I'm trying to get this to look as clear as i can as quickly as possible but yeah that's my quick fix and then it would be to add, of course, like a, a chimney, maybe chop off a little bit of the design that is unnecessary. Uh, anything to add a little flavor. Maybe it's a little uh, boat out room where that stage was that I just drew in the previous layout. Maybe it's adding a second tier of roofs over to here. That that kind of adds a little bit of the a craftsman quality uh, to the overall aesthetic, which again adds a little more sophistication to it, even on a subtle level. Again, coming in, what type of shutters you know does this house have? What what is the color? Do they do? Is there planters underneath the windows? Do they have? Is it dead plants? Is it live plants? Any little bit of context uh, contextual detail can add a little bit more flavor to the overall design and make it a lot more pleasing for the viewer to digest. Again, I'm going to show. This is just a, a good example and then not not as good example. Here's the not as good example. It's a very nicely drawn, very standard cart, right? It's, it's a house. We don't know exactly who's pulling it, it but the design is there. It, it's, it's clear enough drawn, but it's just lacking personality and it's lacking some character. So to contrast that and to show something completely opposite, I have this great submission from a student, right? We can see uh, the really clear name. We could see that there's different cultural aesthetics and reference. You know, it feels very Norwegian. Uh, we, it has a purpose. And it's just a lot better of a design because it has a lot more flavor to it. This is the next issue I have, and this is number four. And that's a lack of reference, which is a bit a little different than the other elements. But see, this person wanted to draw a scavenger's all-terrain vehicle. Parts of it do look referenced. It looks like a very typical thing. But if it's scavengers, think back to the movie Mad Max here, right? These things are built and rebuilt over time a lot. They're made from different parts. They're, they're repurposed everything. And this doesn't have that sense of history. It didn't have that context. This second one is, an, uh, is a rock crushing robot idea, which I'm all about. I think the more ambitious the idea, the better. But at the same time, it's also, it's a lot more challenging to convince the audience and the director, whoever out, whoever you're trying to give, give the design for, uh, the, the more, uh, farther from reality it is. So again, this robot crusher, it's got a lot of mechanical bits to it. It's a cool idea, but I think I'd have to reference, if this was my design, a lot more mechanical things. I need to know all the different types of joints, what type of uh, pivot pivoting actions we would need, different piston systems, hydraulics. I'd really need to get in there to really research and reference a type of design to make it look halfway convincing. Here's another different example, right? We have this cool design, the values are looking cool, overall nice composition, but just look at these mountains on the left. They're just a wiggly shape. I have no idea what type of mountains those are. There are so many different types of mountains. We could have mountains in the desert. We could have the Swiss mountains, you know, the Alps. We could have um, the the Rockies, like those barren, hard, jaggy rocks. We'd have the, the rocks in, like in New Zealand. There's so many different types of mountains. It's like that with like a little bit of reference will go a long way. Your design will feel a lot more refined. It will feel a lot more sophisticated. It's going to feel a lot more referenced and researched. And that's all we need sometimes. Lastly is this character design that we got you know, a little earlier on. It was weak. It's a week two design, but it's, it's a magician. But again, it looks like something that, like if I drew a magician right now out of my head, that's what it looks like. You have to get in there and, and research and design every little aspect of a character. The coat, the hat. Maybe the facial uh, hair, like a cool mustache. Maybe, maybe it's the cigars they have in their pocket. What time period is this from? What culture is this, is this magician from? You can add a lot more context by doing a little research. 
And so last but not least, that brings us on to my number five, you know, largest mistake that I see, and that's weak shape design. Now that can pertain to the composition as a whole, the flow, uh, to down to the individual elements. Are the mountains in nice shape? Are the characters in, made up of nice shapes? Are, the, are props designed using nice shapes? You know, both you know in silhouette and internally. So I, I see a lot of that. Here's just a few brief examples. So again, here's the original uh, student work up here, and I broke down the shapes, which you can see right here. That's a pretty good arrangement. It's a good, as, a good assortment of shapes. You have some that are sharp, some that are angular, some that are more organic and flowy. It's a there's a good arrangement, a nice variety. That some are big, some are small. Now there's a there is a little bit of a lack of a smaller shape arrangement, and there is a huge tangent of the forest going conveniently around. Uh, the golem and then there's a mirrored shape off with the two mountains on each side so when I broke down the shapes and I tried to remedy that and and my paint over that's kind of how I was thinking of in terms of shapes rather than like okay how do we address trees rocks now it, it comes down to shapes first shapes uh, really kind of indicate the foundation of the image whether it's illustration a concept piece or just a, you know a drawing in general so that's that's kind of how I'm thinking about it okay here's here's a better one uh, the, the original student piece is down here in the uh, lower right. So it's a good idea. We have we have the house, which is one. We have mountains, two. We have foreground tr uh, trees, which is three. We have a path and a road, which is four. Then we have a small town, five. I took all the major elements, and I simply just tried to rearrange them to make a more interesting and pleasing and a little more dynamic of a composition. Things here are generally running a little vertically, maybe horizontally. And then the mountains are just kind of doing their own thing. So I tried to use every same piece that they did. And it's a really ugly structural paint over here. But on, on the left, I tried to just break things down in terms of shape, in terms of flow. And yeah, I use symbols like triangles of the tree. as just a simple indication at this level so I can break down the design and see how the shapes are working. Then, you know, if I give this the okay or if I think that, you know, this is working or I want to go with it, then I go back. I get references on the tree and I'll, I'll lower the opacity and then I'll actually draw right and design out the trees so that they are more than just a simple symbol. But that's a great way to start. It lets you look at something objectively and in a very with a very simple lens, I, you know, so to speak. So here's one more example again of weak shape design. And here's again this, the original student one on the uh, top. And it's a great idea. We get this like little cliffside villa with a little village and we have an open way and we see the scene and, and and beyond the sea the lighthouse great idea I love it but yeah it's it's fundamentally hurting in a few areas for me it was the fussy edges of these cliffs they, they're in they're out they're jiggity they're jaggedy they're doing all kinds of things I simplified that in, increased uh, some foliage on there so we could you know basically set dress it uh, you know just for variety sake I extended it so that the house is like oh, basically over here would have you know a little bit more houses so we could see them cascading basically going down this hill and then I basically fixed the value structure of in the vet well essentially the shapes of them as well beyond in the sea area we can see the simple lighthouse we have the cliff running through in the background and then basically you could do whatever the sky but as long as that that lighthouse is reading I th I would kind of go about it kind of like that way so it's a, a simple organization shapes it's making things a little more dynamic and of course easier to read so that's it folks, that's basically my five largest or most frequently seen design mistakes that I see in my classes. So again, that's lack of context. Two, that's unrefined designs. Three, generic ideas. Four, lack of referencing. And five, weak shape design. I suffer for many of them all the time myself. Nobody's perfect. It, and for me, it's I always am fighting that battle against doing something generic. I'm constantly trying to improve the sophistication of my shape design within my scenes and of course within my characters and stuff. And yeah, that that's kind of those two are what I struggle the most with. What do you guys struggle the most with? Leave me a message below in the comment. I'd love to hear it. Maybe we can make a future video about it. Thank you for subscribing and take care. Thanks for watching, particularly if you made it to the end here. If you'd like to support the channel, please like, share, and comment. You can find me on Facebook, ArtStation, and Instagram. Now, I share different content on each platform, so feel free to stalk me across the web. Feel free to join the Brush Sauce community as linked below.
We do hangouts, have a Discord channel, host challenges, and support each other in artistic growth. Finally, if you'd like to inquire about my one-on-one -on -one mentorship program, head over to tyleredlinart.com, click on the mentorship tab for information, and shoot me an email. Also, I run two courses at the Computer Graphics Master Academy. Feel free to check out those as well. Take care.